A cancellation brings us in, in a circle, much like the logic of my opponents on Dr. Phil. One of those opponents, Addison Rose Vincent, who is the one with the beard, posted a story to Instagram shortly before the episode aired uh, yesterday. Addison is not pleased. The post explains, quote, about a month ago, Ethan and I were invited to be guests on the Dr. Phil show to share our, our uh, stories and discuss pronouns. We were excited for the opportunity to educate in a safe space. So you see here, by the way, that they were not looking for a, a debate. They, they were there to educate. And that means that they speak and the rest of us shut up and listen. But that's not exactly how it worked out for them. And now they're traumatized. Back to the post. What ended up happening was much different than we discussed, than they discussed with us. And we left feeling attacked by another guest and played by the producers. Well, the other guest sounds like a jerk. I mean, I, I can't believe he would do that. Addison continues, the episode airs today and we're very worried about how the whole thing will be edited. If you want to watch, go for it. But it may be uncomfortable or triggering to do so. Since the taping, Ethan and I have been experiencing a heightened level of anxiety to the point that we've had numerous nightmares and depression spirals over the last month. This week has been the worst. Please send us both good vibes today. We could really use it. We tried our best with no preparation for what the Dr. Phil show actually had planned behind our backs. And we hope our visibility inspires viewers. Well, Addison, it inspired me. And I hope you can take some solace in that. Well, uh, one thing I can tell you as a four-star chef myself, um, amateur chef, but I consider myself a four-star chef, you, your, your kitchen is not complete without great kitchen knives. And that's why you need Kamikoda. Kamikoda taps into more than 800 years of traditional techniques from Honshu, Japan. Kamikoda also uses steel sourced from mills in Japan, and each blade is crafted using techniques that have been honed and perfected by generations of knife smiths. Each knife comes in a beautiful, heavy-duty ash wood box and makes sure that the knife is stored safely as well. Each Kamikoda knife goes through a rigorous 19-step process that takes several years from start to finish to complete. Our expert bladesmiths forge and shape raw steel into hardy blades, uh, polishing and sharpening them to an excruciatingly fine edge. Each knife is individually inspected. Kamikoto is so confident that their knives will work for you that each knife comes with a lifetime guarantee. Because of their single bevel edge, Kamikoto knives can achieve an unbelievably sharp edge you just can't get with other knives. They can cut through your ribeye like butter. That is guaranteed. Uh, Kamikoto is currently having a massive extended New Year sale, and on top of that sale, you can get an additional $50, 50 off any purchase you make with discount code Matt Walsh. So click the link below or go to kamikoto.com slash Matt Walsh and use promo code Matt Walsh to save an extra $50 today. Now, for the record, they these people were not tricked or fooled by the producers. We all had exactly the same amount of information going in. We knew it would be a panel with people on both sides of the issue. That's all I knew. That's all anybody knew. And as for the editing, the editors did the trans propaganda side a number of favors. Now, I'm not going to claim that, that it was motivated by bias. Dr. Phil's team was really fair to everybody, I thought. But um, things get cut for time, inevitably. And so we all had big chunks taken out. I know that I did. And the more that they cut from the Addison side of it and that team, the better for them. Because they only sounded more and more deranged as the episode went on. So as bad as they sounded, I can tell you right now, it was much worse in, in real time. So what are Addison and Ethan, the poor dears, really upset about? They knew they'd be facing off with people who disagree with them. They also talk about these issues every single day for a living. It's their job to go around promoting this stuff. So wh how, why did I traumatize them? How? Why am I now haunting their dreams? I mean, this is me we're talking about. I'm a cuddly nice and lovable guy? The answer is that our culture has so effectively scared the sane people into silence that these propagandists have been running essentially unopposed this whole time. They've never run into any pushback. They've never encountered any friction. Nobody has ever called them out on their nonsense, ever, for a lot of them. They've been so ensconced in their bubble, so comfortable in their protective cocoon, that it never even occurred to them that anybody, would, that anybody would come on national television and actually challenge their position. The possibility was literally unthinkable. They knew there'd be some kind of token opposition, some patsies brought up there to represent some sanitized approximation of the other side. But they expected that conversation to be rigged in their favor. Because it always is, everywhere, all the time. Now, they still got a little bit of that. Later in the episode, two parents were invited on to talk about their efforts to keep this uh, pronoun crap out of the children's, out of their children's schools. 
And both of these parents are, are doing important work and they're brave for taking a stand and I commend them. But one of them began, I think, with a mistake by laying an offering at the feet of the trans agenda. Watch this. First of all, thank you for having me. And I wanted to say it's so I honor you and your journey and where you are in life. And I, I it has nothing to do with that. It's we're here about our kids. And um, so in school, I feel like this is a family issue. It's a parent child issue. And it's a real issue with some kids. I think that the percentage is quite small mm -hmm. for how many kids go through this real serious issue. Um, and including and imposing this on the entire school or the entire class is where I have a problem. Okay, so that's exactly what Addison and Ethan expected. That's what they want and demand and require. They'll tolerate mild disagreement, if only for appearance's sake, but you better be giving those criticisms on your knees and apologizing in advance for everything you say. I honor you, she said. Well, Addison and Ethan, I do not honor you. I think you're completely wrong about everything you say. What's more, I think you're narcissists and bullies. I think you don't give a damn about anybody or anything but yourselves. I think you advocate for opening up bathrooms and sports teams because from your perspective, the rape, trauma, and abuse that happens as a result is worth it. As long as your ideology wins the day and your self-perceptions are reinforced because that's all you care about. I think you represent something that is not only anti-scientific and irrational, but evil. And I think you have evil intentions. I think you're bad people. And I think that you are neither correct nor well-meaning. And if one person in the whole world, in your whole life, saying this to you causes you to spiral into depression and be plagued by nightmares, maybe that should clue you in. It sounds like your conscience is trying to tell you something. You see, people scream at me every day. And they say the most horrible things about myself and my family. I encounter more outright hostility in a day than you have in your whole life. I guarantee you that. I, don't, I didn't have the audience clapping for me. You do. And yet I've slept like a baby every night since that taping. That's because I know I'm standing in the truth, not just factually, but morally. You don't have the same self-assurance. Well, then maybe you should look within yourself. That's all you ever do anyway. You're constantly staring back into yourself, shouting into the cavern of your own ego, listening to the echo. Well, while you're in there, maybe try a bit of actual introspection. It might serve you well. In the meantime, and I'm sorry if this gives you even more nightmares, but sadly, you are canceled. Well, I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Matt Wall Show. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down there so you can stay up to date on all of our future content.